large pleasant field with a pond with clear water in it. Some shady trees leaned over and rushes and water lilies grew at the deep end. Over the hedge on one side we looked into a ploughed field and on the other we looked over a gate at our master's house. Whilst I was young I lived off upon my mother's milk as I could not eat grass yet. In the daytime I ran by her side and at night I would curl up by her side. There were six colts in the field, a little bit older than me, nearly full grown horses. Oh, we used to run together, <laughs> gallop as hard as we could around the field. But some days they'd be biting and kicking as well as galloping. And on that day, my mother called me over to her. I wish for you to pay attention to what I'm about to say to you. The colts in this field are good colts. They are cart horse colts and have not le yet learnt manners. You have been well bred and well born. Your father has a very good name in these parts. And your grandfather won the cup two years at the Newmarket races. Your grandmother had the sweetest temper of any horse I ever knew. And I think you have never seen me kick or bite. I hope you always will grow up gentle and good and never learn bad ways. Do your work with a good will, lift your feet up well when you trot, and never bite or kick, even in play. Oh, I have never forgotten my mother's advice, for she is a good, wise horse. Our master thought a great deal of her. Her name was Duchess, but he liked to call her Pet. Good day, old Pet, and how's your little blackie? Oh... My coat was a dull black, so she liked to call me Darky. I was a dull black, and very dull I was. Then he would give me a piece of bread, which was very good, and sometimes he bought a carrot for my mother. The other horses, they were also very fond of him, but I think that we were his favourites. A few years later, when I was almost two years old, there was a day that I will never, ever forget in my life. Me and the other colts were having a relaxing drink by the pond when we heard the shrieking and howling of dogs. I walked over to the fence to join them. There are the hounds, the oldest colt said. They have found the hare. What hare, mother? If they come this way, we shall see the hunt. What hare, mother? Of course, I had never seen a hunt in my life before. The dogs would bark as they tore across the field after the hare. What hare? Oh, I don't know what hare. Likely some sort of hare that was born late in the spring. Any hare they can find will do to the, for the hunters and dogs. They just want to run after them. Now we shall see the hare. The hare yeah. tried through the fence, but the fence was too thick. So she tried to make a sharp turn, but it was too late. The dogs were upon her with barking cries. There was a screech from the hare as she tore off and escaped. I looked back at the huntsmen and their horses, and noticed one horse was lying flat on the ground, its rider injured and hurt. There's likely no fixing him, the huntsman would say. And I heard a loud bang, and it broke my heart. I liked that horse very much. Very pleasant horse. His name was Rob Roy. No, 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 That rider, his neck is broken. Serves him right as well. No, well, you must never say that. Us horses, we just do what our riders tell us to. Just mostly for the purpose of a hare or a fox or a, or a deer. But as I'm an old horse, I've seen a great deal. A few days later, we saw the carriage with the coffin in it. The man had died. A horse and a man, very black. And all that was for one little.